Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and welcome back to my support weapon guide. Now, first off, allow me to tell you this. I'm not gonna be one of these catfish that goes, meow, 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 know your role and play it correctly. It's like, no, it's not my job to tell you that. You do what you want. You wanna run around with the M60 and play a support class like Rambo, just exterminating everything in sight? Feel free. If you wanna camp until the cows come home with a bipod, be my guest. However, I will give you the statistics that may influence the way that you operate with different guns as a support player, but before I get into the guns, I need to tell you the most important part of the class. And it's real simple, and anyone who has ever played Assault or Engineer on a hectic map knows this. Give me some ammo, bro! Seriously, you should have a bro box in the ground at all times if there are teammates even remotely close to you. Like, you see a camping crane monster lurking in a place where he shouldn't be? Give him some ammo. You just killed some guy in the lab. Toss that guy a bro box. Someone just stole your lab. Give him some ammo for the road. Even if there is some Carl running in place like it's a treadmill because he's about to lag out, you see what I'm saying? Just give out ammo. That's all I'm trying to say. Now, with that major piece of advice out of the way, we can dive into the basics. And if you saw the Assault Rifle Guide, obviously this is going to be a review, but I think everybody needs to know this information. Okay, so, the default player health is 100 points in normal mode, but it's reduced to 60 points of health in hardcore, and the body multipliers go like this. A headshot receives a 2.0 damage multiplier, doing double the damage compared to torso and arm shots, which have a 1.0 multiplier, with leg shots having a 0.9 multiplier, doing 10% reduced damage compared to body and arm shots. Now, weapons also have a maximum and minimum damage, meaning, it's real simple. When your bullets hit someone at close range, they'll do a maximum damage, and when they hit them far away, they'll do minimum damage. And a rule of thumb is that Anything inside of 10 meters, you hit that guy with a bullet, you're going to be dealing maximum damage, and it's real simple. However, the maximum and minimum damages vary between the different LMGs, so I'll discuss them individually. And I'd also like to mention the role that the bipod plays in the support class. Now, okay, with the weapons of the class having such a high ammo capacity, they have the potential to do very, very well with the bipod. And I know many of you are blatantly against bipods because they're used by players that eat way too much camp sauce. Like, it's really campy when you use a bipod, but its effect on the weapons really should not be ignored. Like, the bipod drastically reduces the horizontal and vertical recoil of support class weapons, while also making both the aim down sight and hip fire spread extremely tight. However, the bipod does not have the same effect on every support weapon in the same way. For example, a bipod decreases the vertical recoil of the Type 88 by 86%, while it decreases the vertical recoil of the M249 by only 80%. So the bipod does not affect all the support weapons in the same way, but these unique recoil values will be addressed as I discuss each individual weapon. But for the purpose of the video, remember this. Okay, it's real simple. Bipods give you the overwhelming advantage of extremely low recoil and a really tight spread while having the disadvantage of little to no mobility. That's about it, just remember that. And as far as my opinion on choosing the third slot attachment, I just say when in doubt, use extended mags. I will usually run a laser sight if I'm on a close quarters map, but I wouldn't exactly recommend that for you guys. I'm just a catfish that for some reason I don't like aiming down sight, but I'm weird like that. And Although there are some weapons that have really awful recoil where you should be using a suppressor, the majority of the time, just go with extended mags. So really, when in doubt, just go with extended mags. It's really hard to lose with double the ammo capacity. It's hard to go wrong with that many more bullets. And one final note that I want to make before I move on is that in this video, I will not be covering the QBB95 or the MG36. Let me explain why. Since I didn't include the L85A2, or the FAMAS in the Assault Rifle Guide, I thought I may as well combine all of the back to Carcan weapons into one solidified guide instead of making like an individual guide for the L85 and the FAMAS. It didn't make any sense. So the thing that made most reasonable sense to me was just to make an entire back to Carcan weapon guide in the future. So hopefully that clears everything up and it'll make it a lot easier for you and I. Now that we have all this jibber jabber out of the way we can finally move on to the weapons and the first LMG on the list is the M27 IAR. The M27 IAR has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 17 with a fire rate of 750 rounds per minute with a magazine size of 45 rounds 
having the ability to hold 46 rounds if you have a bullet in the chamber. And it reloads in 2.9 seconds when empty, and 2.5 seconds if you contain bullets in your current magazine. It has the ability to fire in both full auto and single firing modes, and as you may notice, it looks exactly like the M416 assault rifle. It has the same damage, same rate of fire, and even the same reload animation if you believe that. Now not surprisingly, this weapon is meant to be used arguably aggressively or more aggressively than the other light machine guns. Now, due to the quick reload, high rate of fire, and small ammo capacity of 45 rounds, relatively small, it's much better for aggressive play. And I know, aggressiveness with an LMG? What? It don't make no sense. Well, let me explain. Okay. It doesn't necessarily mean that this weapon won't succeed while you're playing defensively. However, the other LMGs with ammo capacities of what? 100 rounds? 200 rounds do much better in those stationary situations, especially while you're using a bipod. So, because your capacity is so low, or relatively low, with 45 instead of 200 rounds or 100 rounds, and the recoil profile of the M27 is so light, I would definitely go with the grip instead of the bipod, in most situations. And, overall, this weapon is a... a run-and-gun LMG, if you will. I know that's kind of an oxymoron, it's kind of hard to put into your brain, it's like cognitive dissonance, but I'll, I'll explain why. Okay, I know you're not supposed to run again with LMGs, but this is the way that I think about it. If I want to play aggressively, I will usually choose an assault rifle, right? But if your team's already flooded with medics, like all playing the Jamal class, and your team has a problem with enemy vehicles, that's when I go with the M27. That way, you can afford to play aggressively, like you would with an assault rifle because it has such assault rifle characteristics, while also having C4 to blow away any catfish that's just lurking in this big burf tank. This essentially makes you into a assault player with C4. But overall, I would say this weapon excels in most situations that you find yourself in, and just don't forget, if you're going to go all Sergeant Enigma and play aggressive playstyle, don't forget the laser sight on this weapon because the hip fire is inferior to the other assault rifles and the submachine guns, so that's the one takeaway that I have for that third slot. And that's about it. It's basically the aggressive LMG, and I know that's hard to get used to, but that's the way that I'll refer to it from now on. So moving on, the next weapon on the list is the RPK-74M. The RPK-74M has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 17 with a fire rate of 700 rounds per minute with a magazine size of 45 rounds, having the ability to hold 46 rounds yet again if you have a bullet in the chamber. And it reloads in 3 seconds when you still have rounds left in your magazine, and it reloads in 4 seconds when you're completely empty. And yes, as you may notice, it fills a similar role to the M27 IER as a quote-unquote arguable aggressive LMG. However, it does have some major differences. Okay. Number one, the RPK-74M kills slower. It fires at 700 rounds per minute compared to the 750 rounds per minute of the M27, with both weapons having the same damage, so it kills slower. And number two, it has a slower reload time. It reloads half a second slower than the M27 while still containing rounds in the magazine, and a full 1.1 seconds slower while empty. However, it has much more modest recoil, and it's also a lot more linear, meaning that the RPK-74M has a very vertical recoil. Weapons have really different recoils in terms of where they pull and where they push and everything else. So the RPK-74M goes straight up and down with subsequent shots, while the M27 pulls up and to the right because it has different recoil values on different sides. So the two weapons have basically the exact same bullet spreads, both aiming down sight and from the hip, and they're both able to fire fully automatic and single shot. And, no, I don't want to deter you from using this weapon over another, or that weapon over another, but really, the M27 is better. If I stop with all this jibber-jabber about statistics, it's quite simple. The M27 kills faster, and it reloads faster, and that's about it. That's all that I need to know, if everything else is so similar. And yes, the RPK-74M, like I mentioned, has slightly better recoil, but it's not a major advantage, because the recoil on both weapons is so mild anyways, it doesn't have a real profound effect. Now, I don't want to make up your mind for you, but if you want to use this weapon because you think it looks more elegant than the M27, by all means, bro. Personally, I would use the M27 over the RPK-74M if you have it unlocked, because it's better. But at the end of the day, both are great LMGs regardless, and I think they should be used in a similar fashion. And that is basically my opinion on that. And the next weapon on the list is the M249 Saw. 
No, just no. I'm not going to be one of those tricksters that makes some sort of lame pun every time that the saw is mentioned. I'm not... Oh, my saw was the last thing that guy saw before I sawed him in half with my saw. Like, no, just no, that's so awful. You're a catfish and no. The M249 has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 17 with a rate of fire of 800 rounds per minute. It reloads in 6.2 seconds whether you are empty or not, and that is something important to know. Okay. The reload times of the M249, the Type 88, the PKP, the M240B, and M60E4 don't differ between empty and not. Now don't misunderstand me. All of these weapons have different reload times, but it simply means that regardless of whether you extended all of your rounds or not, you will reload in the same amount of time. Hopefully that makes sense. Now moving on, the saw has a default ammo capacity of 100 rounds and is a much more versatile LMG than the other weapons with large capacities of like 100 rounds or more. And I say that because of this, okay. You can slap on a foregrip, run around with your head cut off, and have decent success in close quarters. Or, you can slap on a bipod, go lurk in a bush and drink camp sauce all day, and play in a conservative manner and still succeed there. But regardless of what style you choose to utilize, I always say with the saw, use the extended mag upgrade, bro chacho, it's always good. And no, not because you'll run out of ammo, derp, you're the, you're the support class, you have unlimited bro boxes for life. But I say extended mags because you have that high rate of fire that just chews through ammo and that subsequently means lots of reloading. So the frequent reloading can easily be alleviated by using extended mags. It's real simple and that's why I virtually always run extended mags. And another important note about the saw is that it kills very fast. I feel invincible with it. It's like I'm, when I use it, I feel like walking up to the opposing team and just saying, hey, today ain't show day. And I just destroy them into oblivion. Like only the PKP kills faster. So the saw kills second fastest among all the LMGs in close quarters. And that also doesn't mean that it's only good in close quarters. I mean, it's sort of unique though. It can excel at medium la medium range or even, even long range if you have a bipod, but I say that it's sort of unique to use at medium range because it takes a little bit of practice and it's mainly because it has a very odd recoil. The saw's recoil values to the right, to the left, and upwards are all the same. So that means that it doesn't climb upwards like most conventional weapons, and you'll notice that it really bounces around in random directions. Now it takes some getting used to, and it's a little awkward at first, but I actually prefer that kind of recoil over the fierce upward recoil of many other LMGs like the PKP or the M60. I really like the Saw's recoil. And overall, I have to say, I would recommend this weapon for virtually anybody. I mean, you kill really quickly. You got 200 rounds, implying that you're running extended mags, I know you guys get really bad about that, implying, implying, but it doesn't matter how inaccurate you are, Carl, 200 rounds will last you such a long time, you'll probably die before you finish off 200 rounds. And I can easily say, use it however you want, I mean, camp sauce bipod, assaulting with a foregrip, just make sure that you run extended mags, and I really don't think that you can go wrong with the saw, but... Seriously, bro, extended mags, extended mags, extended mags, because this thing has a ferocious appetite for ammo. That's all I have to say about that. So, the next weapon on the list is the Type 88. The Type 88 has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 17 with a reload time of 7.40 seconds, and it fires at a rate of 650 rounds per minute and has a default ammo count of 100 rounds. And... This weapon just confuses me. I mean, do you guys remember the whole DLC fiasco that was in September or August before BF3 came out? There was that whole physical warfare pack that the, the Type 88 was a part of. Do you guys remember that? Oh, it gave you a tactical advantage on day one. Well, what advantage would that be, bro? Bro being dice? Okay. Among all the LMGs, it kills the second slowest. It has the slowest reload. Recoil very similar to the saw and the same bullet spread as the saw so Maybe by tactical advantage They meant you could intentionally use a weapon that was worse than the default support weapons on day one, so Is that some sort of joke? Is that like a Rafi ruse? I I don't understand because essentially the type 88 is an m249 saw but worse They have the same damage same bullet spread nearly the same recoil, but the Type 88 has a rate of fire that is 150 rounds per minute less than the saw. And I would treat the weapons very similarly, but still, I don't see... I don't see a compelling reason to use the Type 88 over the saw. 
at least from a statistical standpoint, I mean, I don't mean to hate on you or get mad at you if you're a big fan of the Type 88, but it's fairly simple. You have two weapons that are virtually identical in every way, yet one kills much faster than the other. Why wouldn't you use that one? I mean, isn't that simple? I, I don't understand. The weapon balancing by dice is very much some sort of witchcraft that my brain just can't comprehend. And I also want to say here that I always have faith in dice, alright? I always have faith in dice. Just like the AN-94 The Assault class, they will probably patch it eventually, and they reach nearly perfect weapon... It's, it's my opinion here, but I think they've reached nearly perfect weapon balancing in Bad Company 2, but keep in mind, that took a long time. That took a long time. That wasn't like at release or months after release. That was a very, very long time after release when they actually reached really good weapon balancing. So, I have faith in dice, just give them time. But overall, when you're thinking about spawning with a Type 88 and you think it's a good idea, I'd probably just slap yourself in the face, go eat an Ego, and then come back and spawn with the Saw instead. Because the Saw is so superior. I, ha I hate to dumb down the Type 88, but there was really no advantage of using the Type 88 over the Saw. So when in doubt, don't use the Type 88 and use the Saw instead. Next up, we have the PKP. The PKP has a maximum damage of 34 and a minimum damage of 20 with a reload time of 5.5 seconds and a fire rate of 600 rounds per minute. Now, this weapon is very unique compared to the other LMGs, not only because of the special damage of 34 and 20, but because of its range capabilities. Now, I'm not endorsing that this weapon is great at long range, but it has a different distance of minimum damage. What I mean by this is, the bullets of most other LMGs reach their minimum damage at 50 meters, as in really far away, but the PKP doesn't reach its minimum damage until 75 meters. So, theoretically, this should give it extended range beyond the other LMGs and increase motivation to use it with a bipod. Now, technically, the weapon kills faster, yes, than all the other LMGs in close range, even faster than the saw. However, the low rate of fire doesn't make it ideal for close quarters. And I'll give you this example. Okay, I'll give you this example. With the saw, you can afford to miss a couple shots in close range, and you'll still win the gunfight because your high rate of fire makes up for it. But with the PKP, you miss even a couple shots, and you'll probably lose a gunfight in close quarters because of your low rate of fire. And another unique feature of the PKP is that it's the only LMG that can kill in three body shots in close range. All other LMGs require four shots or more to kill in close range. And one final difference for many others is the suppression effect, and this is... I don't know how noteworthy this is, but I'm going to mention it anyways. The PKP, the M240B, and the M60E4 have a greater suppression effect than the other LMGs. These three unique weapons have a suppression value of 10% compared to the previously mentioned LMGs, which have a 7% suppression value. Not that it's a huge difference, but I felt it was noteworthy. I don't know how much you can take away from that. Like, for example, this semi-auto snipers have about a 20% suppression effect, and some of the bolt actions have around a 35 su percent suppression effect. I don't know how much you can draw away from that. I don't know how much you guys think that suppression has an effect on your, on your gameplay, but I felt it was noteworthy anyways. Now, despite the unique advantages of the PKP, it has some serious disadvantages, bro, Chacho. Like, look, it has the highest vertical recoil of all the LMGs. It also has wider hip fire spread compared to most of the others, and that's most of the time why I use it with a bipod. I mean, I'm very campy with this weapon, however, if I do choose to play with a little bit more mobility, you have to use the grip. Like, seriously. This is what this weapon boils down to. You will probably enjoy using it like I do. The damage is baller. Like, the damage is great. But the recoil is just annoying at anything beyond... Anything at or beyond medium range. And I'm not even joking when I say that sometimes I use a suppressor and a grip just to tone down on the kick. Like, it is that bad. So... Overall, the recoil just has to be adjusted to sometimes. It's sort of like the saw, but I think the saw is still easier to get used to to this thing. Th this recoil is very, very unique. So, I would just use it for a while to figure out exactly how to use it, and then I think from there, that's how you make it really deadly. It can be really deadly, but you have to know how to use it correctly. So, I'm saying that this weapon can be devastating, but you have to master the recoil. That's what it boils down to in my opinion. And the next two weapons on the list are the M240B and the M60E4. Now, before I discuss each one of them individually, I must tell you about a flaw that they have. Now, granted, this is only in close quarters, but these two weapons suffer from something that I call fourth bullet syndrome. Okay, let me explain it this way. 
Obviously the default player held is 100 points, right? Well, most other LMGs deal 25 damage per bullet, meaning that in close quarters it takes them 4 bullets to kill someone. Real simple. With the M240B and the M60E4, they each deal 30 damage per bullet at close range, meaning that it also takes them 4 shots to kill. Because at 3 shots with this weapon, obviously you're only dealing 90 damage and you haven't crossed the actual 100 damage threshold to actually kill the catfish yet, so with the M240B and the M60E4 having much lower rates of fire compared to these other LMGs that deal 25 damage per bullet, for lack of a better phrase and to put it briefly, you are going to get raffle stomped at close range with these two weapons and I'm not even kidding at all. So let's go ahead and move on to the M240B first. The M240B has a maximum damage of 30 and a minimum damage of 20, reloading in a time span of 6.2 seconds with a rate of fire of 650 rounds per minute. It also has some vicious recoil, just like the PKP, only its, its recoil is a little bit better than the PKP, yet it has similar spread to the other LMGs, and I know how goofy I sound, but I would use a grip and a suppressor if I was running around because it's that kind of recoil. It's that kind of recoil where it's like... It's, it's ridiculous, okay? It's just like the PKP. I, okay, suppressor might be a little bit overkill, but you need at least a grip if you're running around because the recoil is horrendous. But then again, this weapon is so dreadful in close quarters, I don't know why you would run and gun with it anyways. So if I use it, you'll probably find me lurking in a camp spot, something with a lot of darkness, and really, I think that's what this weapon is best for. Setting up a solid defense of a certain area is really where it excels. And I tend to use it on defense maps. Well... <laughs> to put it bluntly, I tend to not use this piece of garbage at all, but when I do use it, I tend to use it on defense maps like Operation Metro or Grand Bazaar or Zen Crossing. You know, one of those maps. You know, one of those awful maps that has choke points that can easily be locked down with an LMG and a bipod. That's basically what this weapon is all about. It's all about locking an area down for solid defense. At least that's what I think. Because you can't run and gun, bro, Chacho. Don't even try. It's torturing yourself if you try to run and gun. You probably saw that in my gameplay. So, I don't use it personally, and I don't recommend that you use it personally, but if you're going to, I would play conservatively and probably grab a bipod. And the final weapon on the list is the M60E4 or Rambo gun. Now, despite the fact that Rambo could run around with this thing and murder every single catfish and Carl and Trickster and ruin every single chatty Cathy Gabfest that he ever came across, you sadly can't really do that in Battlefield 3 with this weapon. Just to put it in a nutshell for you, the M60E4 is the M240B with a lower rate of fire and slightly less recoil. It has the same damage with a maximum of 30 and a minimum of 20, in addition to a slower reload of 7.2 seconds and a fire rate of 580 rounds per minute. And to say it bluntly, this thing kills very slowly, like too slowly. With a four bullet syndrome, and the low rate of fire at only 580 rounds per minute, you really can't succeed in close quarters. Like, you are much better off getting a bipod and defending an MCOM or a flag from an advantageous position like lurking on a cliff, but despite the fact that I always try to emulate Rambo every single time that I equip this weapon, I just can't do it. I try to run around like, YOU BETRAY THE LAW AND I TRY TO KILL EVERYBODY, BUT IT, it DOESN'T WORK. It's just too limited statistically. It's essentially the uglier sister of the M240B. It's just like the Type 88 and the Saw. Obviously the Type 88 is the uglier sister. Well, in this situation, the M60E4 is the uglier sister. I really would not recommend it at all, but if you are going to use it, you better have a good camp spot and you better use it on something like Grand Bazaar or... You know what? Operation Metro Rush 64, man? This has got the M60E4 written all over it, so unless you're going to be really, really campy and be very, very stationary, I would not recommend this weapon. But if you're going to use it, you best find yourself a bipod, Rochacho, and that's, that's about it. I think I've said everything that I want to, and the question now is, which one do you guys want next? I know that's kind of weird, because I always ask you guys, but like, which one do you guys want next? You guys want engineer, recon, generals, shotguns, pistols, and you guys always say engineer, and then I'm like... Nah, dog. I'm making, making an LMG guy. Nah, dog. It's like, I don't mean to ignore your opinion, but I will genuinely make the next one whatever you guys really want it to be. Whether it's engineer, recon, pistols, whatever. So, please let me know, bro. Bro, chacho. And that's about it. I think I have a ton of bonus clips for you, including 
I think one of them is Chuck Norris, too. Like, he didn't die from any kind of conventional bullets or explosives, and then I somehow took Chuck Norris' sandwich and he died. So, enjoy those. But other than that, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later. And also VGS and VGTG, because I am the greatest. I am the greatest. No. <laughs>